My name is Rissa Miller. I'm standing before you to say, sometimes the most pivotal moments in our life happen at fully unexpected moments. I fell in love with this word, carioscurist, when I was in college. I was studying art history. It is an Italian word. It is about the dark defining the light. In art history, like this Vermeer, it became about finding depth. Previous to the Carioscurist movement, many artists were illuminating. They were making everything bright, kind of like constant light and love. I think of myself as light in the dark, but also someone who can indeed embrace both shadow and darkness. I always was, as I am, I always was into both light and dark. This is me as a little girl in my family herb garden, and I couldn't wait to shed my bright sunny disposition and go pick up my spooky rhymes and riddles. That was probably my favorite childhood book. As someone who loved both light and dark, it is no surprise I studied photography, right? Light, dark, light. I absolutely love when I'm photographing someone to find their light and dark, to find the different aspects in their personality and bring depth to my subject. This is probably my most well-known picture. It has been copied and stolen dozens of times. Speaking of dozens, it did take three dozen eggs to get this picture. Um, I do admire the dancer still to this day. She was a great sport about it. Uh, they were hard boiled, by the way, so no worries about the mess. I do love in this photograph how you can see this young man's feeling expressed through the dark and light of the picture. This was a study of a child with ADHD that I did in photojournalism school. And this moment truly defined his struggle for understanding. Light can be colorful too, as can the dark. Also dogs are always my number one fan, so I had to include a few throughout. I really love in the diner picture how the darkness and the light create that really cool reflection. I'm also a writer. I love poetry. I love all kinds of writing. This was the beginning of my poetry career. Back in 1994, I was part of the poetry continuum. I had a, a, you know, a cassette tape of my recordings <laughs> that you could purchase at my readings. But you know, I've progressed since then, and I have other chapbooks out. Uh, this was my most recent publication, Goodnight Poet. It is a lot of exploration of dark and light, and they are poems that are meant to be shared at bedtime as we are entering the dark. My next poetic work is called The Devil's Boudoir. It is generally darker because I feel like there's so much darkness not fully expressed. It is a exploration, an exploration of our dark emotions through the lens of monsters. Ultimately though, along the way, I realized I'm actually a storyteller. I would have never used that word to describe myself when I was younger, I was so shy. But over time, I've discovered I love doing this right now, standing in front of people and talking. It is probably my true calling. To that end, I started giving ghost tours. I've always been into history. I gave my first history tour at age 15 for York County History Center, and now I write my own history programs. Of course, shadow exploration, such as a ghost tour, is necessary. There's my number one fan, a dog. <laughs> I do this in other places too, not just Pennsylvania. I work regularly in Maryland. That's my History of Superstitions <coughs> program. I explore witch history, all kinds of dark and esoteric ideas that maybe other people shy away from. They're part of our collective history as well, and I like to bring light. It also surprised me to find, after years of standing behind a camera, that I liked standing in front of one. Um, at first, I wasn't sure, I'm not gonna lie, but I realized it's actually great fun, and it's a wonderful way to share a story. 
So I started making videos, doing audio recordings. I'm also a diviner. I realize saying that I'm a third generation tarot card reader in Hanover right now is iffy. But I am who I am and I embrace who I am. This is some of my tea leaf reading and always I look for the dark and light in my seekers messages. I also do smoke reading, which is another very historic and esoteric practice. The idea is that in the soot are symbols and messages. The shadows, again, reveal the light. I loved soot reading so much, I started incorporating it into actual art. Um, these were all pieces that were hung at, uh, one was at Hive, the other was the dark parlor in Royal Square. The shout out to those places, thanks for believing in my art. But I do also love pen and ink drawing. Um, it is something I grew to love because of my dad. My thoughts about light and dark are that they must exist together. They not only complement each other, they are required. We have to have them to be whole. So in a moment when everybody's looking for light and love, I remind you, it's okay to turn to face your shadow and ask it for a dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs>